Hello and welcome to week 9. This week we'll take a look at the Poisson regression model. So we've covered the binomial logistic regression model and the Poisson is another model that deals with count data. So we shall look at the Poisson probability model. Some of this is a revision we've seen the Poisson distribution before earlier. And then we'll take a look at the Poisson regression model. The some ideas here will be similar to what we saw with binomial, but some will be different here. And this comes from chapter 22 of our textbook. So let's have a look. We know the generalized linear model consists of a probability distribution from what's called the exponential family, and that includes things like binomial, normal, and the Poisson, which are of interest to us. Some linear predictor. Now, and this linear predictor is what we will take as a regression against all the other covariates. In the case of the binomial distribution, in this linear predictor is the log of the odds ratio. And here, the mean of y, or mean of our observed values or response values, is the inverse of this. So we know that it works out as exponential here in this case. And so the mean here is going to be for the binomial distribution. In the case of the normal distribution, the g function is actually the probability. In the case of the normal distribution, the g function actually is the mean itself. So here is a quick comparison of the normal or Gaussian regression where here we're looking at the response as normally distributed and the link is the identity function. That means the g function here of the mean of the responses is just mu itself. And the variance here is assumed to be constant. In the logistic regression, the distribution is binomial or binomial. The logit is the link function and the variance is a function of the mean. And here is the data situation. We're going to have here our response. So this is the Gaussian response. And this is the binary response. Or the Bernoulli response as well. The binary response here, in this case of extinct versus not extinct. So the normal distribution will be just the usual continuous data. For the binary, it will be 1, 0. And for the, well, for the Bernoulli, it's 1, 0. For the binomial, we'll have two parts. One is going to be the failures and one's going to be the success. And then the usual covariates here. And the mean here is going to be mu for the Gaussian regression and pi for the logistic regression in this case. The example we'll take a look at here is from the textbook where what we're looking at again is something from a paper. And young male elephants are usually unsuccessful in competing against their older companions in learning mating with females. And male adults actually continue to go throughout the most of their adult lives. They keep growing. And the interest here is in whether there is a relationship between mating success and the age of the elephant. And this is important for maintaining elephant populations. If the young elephant males can't mate so much, so much, we require to have more of the older males in the population. And also, the question of interest is whether this rate of success diminishes after some age, or does it carry on in the older age? So the data here consists of 41 African male adult elephants in, in this Emboseli National Park in Kenya over an eight-year period, and what we have here is the estimated age, not its estimated age, and the number of matings. So this can be observed, but well, this is estimated. And the other issue here with the data, of course, is because this is over an eight-year period, of course, the elephant will grow older over the eight years. Exactly what age was used here is unclear. That's one problem with the data that we need to be aware of. Here's the data just two columns. The data is called elephants and it is sleuth case 2201. The age of the elephant and the matings which is 0, 1 as a count. 
here is uh, the summaries. We have the age goes from a minimum of 27 years to a maximum of 52 years. And the number of meetings go from zero for some elephants to all the way to nine as a maximum. And you can see clearly from what's going with the data here. If you look at the median, it's lower than the mean, but also the first lower, the lower quartile here is one, and the upper quartile is three, and between three and nine is a large gap. And so from the mean, you can see the large gap to the lower quartile and upper, to the maximum and minimum. So the data will be right skewed, as we expect with this kind of count data. And here is a plot of the data. We've got the number of matings as a frequency count. You find that it Typical, it looks like a, a Poisson distribution. This here is a bit of a problem because the Poisson distribution should keep decreasing. It should keep going downwards, and there's a sudden increase in that. And so this is count, but not binomial. Because binomial is only zero one if it's binomial, or it takes all values between zero to the maximum which is the number of trials in this case we don't have a number of trials and in this case also theoretically the number of meetings can keep going on forever so this is count data which we model as a Poisson distribution here our random variable is, is Poisson with parameter lambda we know that for the Poisson distribution the mean and the variance are the same. As in the binomial counts, the mean there and the variance are related. So the variance was a function of the mean. Here also the variance is a function of the mean. In fact, it's actually equal to the mean. And we know that the Poisson distribution takes values 0, 1, 2, 3, all the way to infinity. The mean rate of occurrence here essentially is bigger than 0. And the probability mass function is given by this particular function. As we saw earlier, the random variable, Poisson random variable, will model count data. So things like, for example, the number of earthquakes in a year, number of car accidents at an intersection per day. So there's some idea of volume here. In this case, it's per year. This is per day. Number of typographical errors per page. Number of shark attacks per year. So it's going to be over some value here, and it's over that volume that we're taking a look at the average rate as being fixed for the volume. The Poisson distribution came from this article by Simeon Poisson in 1837. It actually is related to the binomial distribution somewhere, so those of you who might do more probability will realize that you can actually approximate the binomial by the Poisson. But we're not going to go there. And so you can look at the rest of it if you wish. In fact, the Poisson distribution actually always was modeled here, well, as we used the model many years ago, when they were looking at the number of deaths by a horse or mule kicks in the Prussian army. So here is a plot of the Poisson distribution for various values of lambda. And a D Poisson here actually calculates the value of the probability for each of the values of the random variable itself. You can see the plot over here. You'll notice that as lambda increases, I haven't got lambda here as in the key, but you'll find as lambda increases, it won't take you much to work out. So this is going to be lambda equals 1, the lowest maximum there. That's lambda equals 2. And then that's lambda equals 3. And this is lambda equals 5. You notice that the distribution becomes more symmetric and closer to the normal distribution. For large values of the mean mu here, the Poisson distribution is well approximated by a normal distribution. Again, we won't use that fact here. In the case of the alpha data here, yi is counts, y, y equals 0, 1, 2, up to in this case 9, but in theory it can go on forever. 
Lambda is the average rate of successful matings for these elephants, and we're looking at an, a period of eight years over here. So the lambda here will be the average rate of successful mating of these elephants over eight years. So be careful, it's not just per year or any other time frame, it's over eight years. As I've said over here clearly. Everything else we have seen earlier follows in principle. We can estimate here the mean number simply by the average of the y's, average observed value, and it's approximately normal. Now we saw earlier that the mean is going to be of this estimator here. The sample average is mean, which is equal to the mean of the distribution you're looking at, and the variance is going to be sigma squared upon n. Now sigma squared for the Poisson distribution is actually equal to lambda. The variance is equal to lambda, so that's why we've got lambda over n here. And of course, if I have data here, I will be able to put in lambda hat in the positions for the normal distribution, the mean and variance, and be able to work out from here inferences. So a 95% confidence interval is going to be lambda hat observed, the average value, plus or minus 1.96, which comes from the normal distribution, and the standard error of lambda hat. And of course, the variance here, as we saw, is lambda point n. So the standard error is a square root with lambda hat observed, substituted here instead of lambda. So all those kinds of things follow as before. In this case with the elephant data, we worked out the mean here. The mean number of matings is 2.68. The standard error is going to be lambda on n square root of. And n here is the number of elephants we had, which was 41. So that's the standard error here, a lambda or n square root of. And a 95% confidence interval for the mean here, based on just the raw data at the moment, is, as before, lambda hat minus 1.96 times the standard error, and then the same with the plus in the middle. That comes to 2.1 up to 3.1. So this is our estimate of 95% confidence interval for lambda. which is the mean number of matings in a period of eight years. The same interpretation as before. The sample size is 41, so if we repeatedly sample 41 elephants over a period of eight years, we expect 95% of the confidence intervals that result from that to contain the true parameter lambda. Hypothesis test in the usual way, and I'll come back to that in the next lecture. Thank you. Bye.